Our favorite characters in Star Trek, Batman, and Power Rangers survived the wildest adventures imaginable. But in 2022, we lost many of the iconic stars that made these sci-fi series what they are today. Born in Manchester, England in 1941, David Hattersley Warner was a well-known face in genre television and cinema starting in the 1970s. Taking advantage of Hollywood's pension for casting Brits as villains, Warner used his menacing persona in roles such as Sark in 1982's Tron and Evil in Terry Gilliam's 1981 feature Time Bandits. With a rare talent for elevating any role he played, there seemed to be few franchises that Warner did not grace with his presence. He eventually made his way to the most successful science fiction TV franchise of all time. He would leave his mark as St. John Talbot in Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Chancellor Gorkon in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, and Gol Madred in the classic Star Trek The Next Generation two-part episode Chain of Command. In this room you do not ask questions. I ask them. You answer. With echoes of the sinister O'Brien from George Orwell's 1984, Madred's scenes where he mentally and physically tortures Patrick Stewart's Captain Picard are among the most memorable of the series. Every scene is an acting masterclass, with Warner's performance as convincing as it is chilling. You'll almost believe that there are five lights yourself. Regardless of the actual number, one bright, talented star faded out when Warner died from a cancer-related illness at 80. Kevin Conroy is the voice that many hear in their heads when they think of Batman. The New York-born actor voiced the Cape Crusader in dozens of animated movies, TV series, and even a rare foray into live action. But it was 1992's Batman the Animated Series that we heard his debut as the Dark Knight. The Juilliard-trained actor brought warmth and mystery to Bruce Wayne, and a threatening seriousness to his vigilante alter ego. Just as Adam West was the definitive voice of the character in the Silver Age, Conroy's vocal talents arguably defined the character in the modern age. Shortly before his death, he wrote a short story for the DC Pride 2022 anthology titled Finding Batman. He details the trials and tribulations of being a gay actor trying to find his feet in Hollywood. This culminates with a peek into how he discovered the inner and outer voice of the Batman. Conroy died after a short battle with cancer at the age of 66, leaving behind his husband, Vaughn Williams. Fred Ward was as just at home in B-movies as he was in major productions. The San Diegan is best known to genre audiences for his portrayals of Gus Grissom in Philip Kaufman's The Right Stuff and Earl in the Tremors franchise. Must be a million of them! Nope, just one! Based on Tom Wolfe's novel of the same name, The Right Stuff is the true story of Project Mercury, the first American attempt at human spaceflight. While the cast is a who's who of talented actors, Ward's turn as one of the first men to fly into space twice stands out. His portrayal shows Grissom as an authentic character, genuine and flawed. Ward died at the age of 79. The cause of death has not been revealed, but Ward had asked for memorial donations to be made toward the study of the brain disease known as traumatic encephalopathy. Actor Kevin Bacon spoke fondly of their working relationship on the Tremors movies, citing their mutual love of jazz and Django Reinhardt. Ward was such a fan of the Belgian jazz legend that he named his son after him. While modern audiences may have been introduced to William Hurt through his portrayal of Lieutenant General Thaddeus Ross in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that pales when compared to the four decades of work the Academy Award-winning actor left behind. The 1998 Alex Proyas movie Dark City has arguably never gotten the recognition it deserved, being eclipsed by The Matrix when originally released. The reality-bending sci-fi noir is considered a classic due to its convincing central performances, especially Hurt as Inspector Frank Bumstead. Hurt also explored the worlds of cerebral science fiction two decades earlier in 1980's Altered States. Hurt's performance as fanatical professor Edward Jessup remains grounded and believable, a central anchor to a plotline that requires you to suspend a lot of disbelief. Hurt elevates the already lofty material from Patty Chayefsky's novel, making the film a science fiction classic. Hurt died at the age of 71 from complications of prostate cancer. Boasting an impressive resume of television and movie work, Louise Fletcher is instantly recognizable as the tyrannical nurse Mildred Ratchet from 1975's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, for which she earned an Academy Award for Best Actress. In 1993, she brought her considerable acting talent to the Star Trek franchise, appearing as antagonist Win Adami across all seven seasons of Deep Space Nine. She played the belligerent Bajoran with the same energy that made Ratchet so compelling, and it's plain to see that Fletcher relished every moment in the role. Fletcher died of natural causes in her home in France at 88. 
Henry Silva's appearance frequently led to him being cast as a villain. He carved out a substantial career playing mobsters, murderers, and thieves. No stranger to genre television, Silva made appearances in the sci-fi anthology series The Outer Limits and Rod Serling's Night Gallery. In 1979, he forayed into science fiction films. Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, based on the original 1929 comic strip, starred Gil Gerard as a titular hero, with Silva cast as the villainous Killer Kane. While Silva's role was recast in the spin-off TV series that followed, he brought elegance and depth to the evil mastermind. Vulgar and cold, Kane was a memorable foil for our hero. Silva also lent his distinctive voice to animation, voicing the supervillain Bane in both Batman the Animated Series and the 1996 Superman Animated Series. Silva died nine days shy of his 96th birthday at a retirement community in Los Angeles. When a fresh-faced Bernard Cribbins played Tom Campbell in the 1966 Doctor Who film Dalek's Invasion Earth 2150 AD, no one suspected he'd reappear in the franchise half a century later. Though this would be as the character Wilfred Mott, the lovable grandfather of Catherine Tate's Donna Noble. It was a delight for those who had grown up with both Cribbins and Doctor Who to see him appear as a new character. You can't come with me. Oh, you're not leaving me with her. Dad! Fair enough. Although he was never an official companion, he's the only actor to have played two different colleagues of the Doctor. We've yet to see his last performance as Mott, since he filmed some scenes for 2023's 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Older viewers will remember Crippens for his extensive work in children's television. From his frequent appearances on Jack and Nori to his voiceovers on The Wombles, he was an omnipresent force. The actor died at the age of 93. From the authenticity of 2001 A Space Odyssey to the awe and majesty of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, visionary special effects pioneer Douglas Trumbull brought the worlds of speculative fiction to life. The towering industrial vistas of Blade Runner, imitated in countless science fiction cities, would not have existed without Trumbull's groundbreaking work. Trumbull also directed the avant-garde ecological film Silent Running, but his directing career drew to a close after the death of actor Natalie Wood during the making of 1983's Brainstorm. He would return 20 years later to the visual effects industry, which had seen CGI largely replace his pioneering practical effects. After a stroke and a bout of cancer, complications from those conditions led to his death from mesothelioma at 79. His ashes are due to be launched into space with our next entry on this list. It's easy to forget how groundbreaking Star Trek was when it launched in 1966, featuring a spacecraft with a Russian on the bridge crew when the United States was engaged in the Cold War, an Asian crew member when memories of the wars in the Pacific were still fresh, and a black female lieutenant when the country was in the throes of race riots. Star Trek took a bold stance. This isn't reality. This is fantasy. You want an adventure house this? Trained as a singer and dancer, Michelle Nichols got her TV break when she guested on Gene Roddenberry's military drama, The Lieutenant. Roddenberry would then give her the life-changing and lifelong role of Nyota Uhura. After a single season of Star Trek, she was tempted to leave, feeling that her character was underdeveloped. However, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. encouraged her to stay, reminding her how important her character was as a role model for black Americans. Nichols would go on to guest star in many TV shows after Star Trek ended in 1969, but she would return as Ahura in the animated series, movies, and various video game spin-offs. There's no denying how important Nichols was in defining strong female roles and in her inspirational work for NASA, encouraging people of color to join the space program. Nichols died at 89 in New Mexico of heart failure. It seems like there are as many versions of the Power Rangers television series as there are stars in the sky. Adapted from the 1975 Japanese series Super Sentai, the long-running and ever-mutating Power Rangers franchise is as campy as they come, but it wears its influences on its sleeve, remaining as entertaining as ever. And Jason David Frank was a reliable constant. A multidisciplined martial artist and actor, there were few costume colors Frank hadn't worn by the time he officially retired from the franchise in August 2022. Originally cast as Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, in the first season in 1993, Frank soon joined and went on to lead the main team. Although Tommy was only meant to last for 12 episodes, his popularity saw him return and remain a part of the franchise up until recently. Frank even cameoed in the 2017 movie. Frank unfortunately took his own life at the age of 49, with his wife revealing that he'd been suffering from mental health issues. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 
or by calling 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.